Well, as I just said, the economy really is firing on all cylinders, and two proxies for measuring that are consumer spending and a Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, the best performing index since March 1st, up 7%, uh, up uh, today hitting a new high. And it's a great indicator since small cap stocks tend to do and make most of their profits in the American economy. Here now to discuss Melissa Arma, stock swoosh, and back with us, Shaw Galani. Melissa, two things. Uh, I'm loving what I'm seeing on retail. That Macy's number was phenomenal. Uh, what I saw yesterday in retail sales was amazing. That reversion to the prior month was phenomenal. And then, of course, the Russell 2000, these domestic names doing pretty well. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts on Macy's are it did have a nice pop today, but that stock is still in a downtrend. I wouldn't rush to buy Macy's long term today. I if like you bought it at the low, you'd be up about 70% well, in the last you would, year. Well, but you couldn't necessarily predict that. Target I like a lot well, better. Walmart's out to tomorrow service. morning. <laughs> 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 well, you know, but but the overall way. gist, though, you do, you do see consumers, the consumers do have some buying power, though. Yes. Overall, if you look at the whole sector, it's definitely showing improvements. I just like some more than others. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, the Russell 2000, uh, domestic names, the average stock there has a market cap of $800 million. What do you make of that? It makes perfect sense. In the industrials and the S&P, for example, a lot of multinationals there, they get a lot of their revenues from overseas. They're worried about trade wars, tariff wars, et cetera, et cetera. The U.S. dollar is climbing a little bit higher. That also affects international trade. The domestic companies don't face those two hurdles. No reason for them not to be continuing to hit new highs. February 1st, the 10-year uh, the, the, the yield spiked up to 2.85. The market got hammered. In fact, that week it was slaughtered. April 24th, it hit 3%. The market was down about almost 3% that day. Yesterday, we broke through it big time, Melissa. The market was off, but it came off the lows, and it, it feels like maybe now investors are okay with this or have or understanding the correlation between this yield and maybe good things going on in the economy. Sure, definitely. I mean, I think rates were going to go up anyways. That was just bound to happen regardless. But I'm saying overall, I think we may have some more volatility in the market because of all the political stuff that's happening. The market has been holding its own, though. I got to say, I'm a little bit surprised. We still haven't broken over those levels where I said go back in 100 What are those levels? Fine. Because it seems like we broke through some of those uh, trends of, of, of lower highs. We did, but again, buy momentum, buy strength. In the S, uh, strength in the S and P, in the spiders, it's 280, and in the Dow, it's 250, uh, 25,600, or okay. in the Dia, 256. 25,600. I'm writing it down. Write that down. You can buy it there. Shaw, where do you see this market going? I actually see it going higher. Yesterday was impressive to me in terms of the market really selling off in the morning. I thought it was, I was starting to get a little worried. The way it came back, granted it, it didn't it close on the lows, but it, it, it came back fairly strongly considering where it could have gone. Yesterday was pretty scary. It ended up reasonably well. Sure. Uh, we, with rates going, doing what they did, the market didn't take the worst of it, and today we bounced. Right. That's a very positive sign. Thank you both very, very much. Appreciate it. Well, it's National Police Week, which is a time to honor the men and women in blue who have fallen in a line of duty. And we'll do that next.